near the feast of this holy name reflects in, in many ways the, the significance of the holy name, Jesus. This feast was traditionally celebrated as the feast of the circumcision. That's what it was called you know, many years ago. Let me speak briefly about the meaning of circumcision in the Jewish tradition. It's not the way we view it today in our culture. It's quite different. In Luke's Gospel, if we recall back on New Year's Day, we, he wrote that the Jews traditionally had their boy children circumcised on the eighth day after their birth. And during the ceremony, the child would be given his name. Joseph and Mary, they, they followed this tradition with Jesus. Circumcision was the sign of God's covenant with Israel. And the most important thing about that covenant was God's promise to send a savior. So receiving one's name at this time was a symbolic way of emphasizing that the boy's life, in fact, his very identity was now tied up in that promise. So the name Jesus is from the Hebrew Joshua or Yeshua, meaning Yahweh is salvation or Yahweh saves. So this, this is very significant, this holy name of Jesus, it's very significant. Also performing the ceremony on the eighth day was significant. God had created the world in seven days, but creation was ruined by original sin. And so the eighth day is a symbol of the redemption, the first day of the new creation in Jesus Christ. Gives you a little bit of a historical background about this. Jesus is not just another nice name, and circumcision is not just something that happens the way it does in our culture today. And so the devotion to the, to the holy name of Jesus became popular because of 12th century Cistercian monks and nuns, but especially through the preaching of St. Bernardine of Siena, a 15th century Franciscan. St. Bernardine used the devotion to the holy name of Jesus, and perhaps this is how we can begin to use it in our own lives, as a way of overcoming bitter and often bloody class struggles and family rivalries or vendettas in Italian city-states. That's what was happening back in the 15th century in history. And so the devotion grew partly because of the Franciscan and Dominican preachers. And it spread even more widely after the Jesuits began promoting it in the 6th century. So what does the Catechism of the Catholic Church say about this? For those of you who are taking notes, it's number 22666. <laughs> so according to the Catechism, the one name that contains everything is the one that the Son of God received in his incarnation, Jesus contains everything. Think about that. It contains everything. To pray Jesus, this is the catechism, is to invoke him and to call him within us. His name is the only one that contains the presence it signifies. This is the only name that contains the living presence that it signifies. Jesus is the risen one, and whoever invokes the name of Jesus is welcoming the Son of God who loved him and who gave himself up for him or her. That's the catechism. So we begin to see the importance of this name. It's not just another name.
There's something profoundly significant and important about it. The power in the name of Jesus is very evident in the early church. In the name of Jesus, the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk. In the name of Jesus, the dead come to life. You know, in the Acts of the Apostles, we, we read these, we read this. But Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have, I give you. So somebody wanted, he was a poor man, came up to Peter, and this is how he responded. I have no silver and gold, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise and walk. The power in his name, the power in his name. I think sometimes we diminish it, we don't even think about that. The power in his name. Later on in chapter three of the Acts of the Apostles, we hear these words. <clears throat> Luke writes, and on the, on the basis of faith in his name, it is the name of Jesus which has strengthened this man whom you see and know, and the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect health in the presence of you all. The power in his name. The power in his name. You know, this wonderful feast allows us the opportunity to recall, reflect, rejoice that this Jesus, the Son of God, not only works miracles in the lives of people, but it is the one who has saved us from our sins. This Jesus is the one who brings light into the darkness of our lives. This Jesus is the one who opens heaven to earth below, who opens heaven to each and every one of us who have faith in him and in the power of his name. All you and I have to do is call on this name. With great faith and confidence. If he can heal the sick, restore sight to the blind, raise the dead in his name, don't you think he could do anything that we ask him to do for us in the name of Jesus? Jesus said, if we have faith the size of a mustard seed, we could move mountains. Is your faith that small with that much power? If it isn't, pray for that. Lord Jesus, give me this faith so that you may move mountains in my own life. Huh? When St. Bernard of Clairvaux, he lived between 1090 and 1153, when he reflected upon the holy name of Jesus, he said this, he wrote this, and maybe this is perhaps how we can end today. He said, the sweet name of Jesus produces in us holy thoughts, fills the soul with noble sentiments, The sweet name of Jesus strengthens virtue. It begets good works and it, and it nourishes pure affections. All spiritual food leaves the soul, the soul dry if it contains not that penetrating oil, the name of Jesus. That penetrating oil, the name of Jesus. He said, when you take your pen, write the name Jesus. If you write books, let the name of Jesus be contained in them, else they will possess no charm or attraction for me. You may speak or you may reply, but if the name of Jesus sounds not from your lips, you are without unction and without charm. <laughs> Think about that. Think about all the stuff that comes out of our lips, off of our lips, right? Make it be the name of Jesus. He said, Jesus is honey in our mouth. I love honey. 
right? It's good for you too. Just like the name of Jesus. Jesus is honey in our mouth. It's light in our eyes, a flame in our hearts. This name is the cure for all diseases of the soul. Do you believe that? This name is the cure for all the diseases of the soul. He says, are you troubled? Think but of Jesus. Speak of the name of Jesus. The clouds disperse and peace descends anew from heaven. The name of Jesus. He said, have you fallen into sin? How many of us have fallen into sin? That's only half of you, how do you do it? I think you're lying to me. Everyone should have their hand, both hands up, really, if you think about it. <clears throat> he said, have you fallen into sin so that you fear death? How many of you fear death? Wow, nobody's hand should be raised. What's wrong? Invoke the name of Jesus and you will soon feel life returning. No obduracy of the soul, no weakness, no coldness of heart can resist this holy name. There is no heart which will not soften and open in tears at this holy name. Are you surrounded by sorrow and danger? Invoke the name of Jesus and your fears will vanish. Do you believe that? What a beautiful thought from St. Bernard. Beautiful thought. So friends, as we come together today to celebrate the holy name of Jesus, may his name always be that honey in our mouth, that light in our eyes, that flame in our hearts so that our lives will truly reflect the power of his holy name. Amen.